app. Although I did end up taking a few trades after I finished the morning show and uh, finished up almost $8,000 on QS, which was a very interesting stock. Uh, made a huge move today from $26 up to 40 bucks. And I also made some money on ACB, uh, which is Aurora Cannabis, on news that um, I guess um, there's going to be a vote next week about the legalization of marijuana on a federal level. So uh, anyway, so I ended up doing, uh, doing well later this morning after we finished the morning show. But the reason I wanted to come on here was because I have been looking back at a few comments over the last few days, and I've noticed a theme of traders asking me, what was so different about 2020 that allowed you to make over $4 million in profit? And I can make this bigger if that's helpful. So this, these are my metrics uh, year to date, not including uh, today. So up through, um, well, yesterday we didn't trade yesterday. So up through uh, the day before yesterday. So this is current uh, with the exception of today's profits. $4.3 million in day trading profits this year in 2020. Now, to put that in perspective, this is something that I had no way of being able to anticipate. I The level of volatility that we have in the market, the number of opportunities that we had, none of that was something that I was expecting for 2020. In fact, I thought that I sort of had reached a bit of a plateau in my trading that I could you know, kind of coast on anywhere from 350 to probably $700,000 a year in profits. Average months were, you know, anywhere from twenty-five to fifty thousand. Summer, you know, I had a couple eighty, ninety thousand dollar months. My best month of all time was like one hundred and twenty thousand before this year. My new best month of all time is over one point two million, which was the month of June, and so things just exploded. And so I'm going to talk about the reasons. I'm going to talk a little bit about day trading in 2020, and I'm going to talk about what I would sort of see as um, the clearest reasons why I was able to scale my strategy from a $400,000, $500,000 a year to uh, over $4 million. And yes, it is dark outside. Uh, the sun has gone down, but I'm here and uh, we're going to break this down for you guys this evening. And uh, please, those of you guys tuning in live, because I like doing these broadcasts live, I, I found whenever I try to do pre recorded videos, I, I get so kind of like fixated on having it be perfect that I'll end up doing like 10, 15 do-overs and then I could just spend hours and hours and then I just get so frustrated. I, just, I forget what I said in take one and take seven and now while I'm doing the final one, did I already say that? And so now I'm kind of like, let's just go live lights camera action and we're live streaming here on youtube and facebook so thank you guys because you help kind of give me the energy to just kind of roll through it and if i hit little bumps it's just it's not a big deal um so let's see um and I, so i see your comments thank you guys who are tuned in uh and yes we obviously have some sales going on right now uh, many of you guys are already aware of that but uh, I want you, I'm going to put a link in the, let's see, at the top of the, I'm going to pin it to the top of the comments. And I'm going to put it in the description as well. So for those that are watching today, I encourage you to jump over to the website uh, to check out um, the sales that we're running. For those that are watching this maybe three weeks from today or a year from today or whatever the case is, okay, the sales that we were running right now today may be over. But what I'll do is when these sales end, I'll update the link down in the description and pin to the comments uh, to have you guys register to one of my upcoming workshops. So uh, during those workshops, I give out a free copy of my best-selling book, and I usually teach you guys sort of my um, uh, three uh, favorite techniques for finding stocks with home run potential and where I get in and where I get out. So I'll give something for you guys uh, who are watching this down the road. So just check out the links in the comments or, or pinned to the top comment and in the description. Okay, so uh, 2020. So this year, um, something very interesting happened, obviously. 
uh, which was that the entire U.S. economy shut down. I mean, virtually the entire economy shut down. And what that meant was millions and millions of Americans all of a sudden were sitting at home, stuck at home with nothing to do. And that created a major surge in a couple of different um, areas. It created a huge surge in uh, tech companies like Zoom and Slack and Salesforce and Amazon. It also created a lot more interest in the stock market for those specific stocks, but also the stock market in general because people were at home and they were recognizing there's an opportunity here for me to get into the market and make some money while I'm sitting at home. This is a job that I can do uh, from the comfort of my own home, from the safety of my own home. And obviously there's people out there like Ross and you see certainly other people out there from day traders all the way up to investors like Jim Cramer or Carl Icahn or Warren Buffett, Bill Ackman. I mean, you know that there's people out there that make money in the market. And so whether it's Bitcoin or it's the US stock market, you figure, all right, I'm gonna give this a chance. And so what that ended up uh, resulting in was a surge in volume in the overall market, a massive surge in volume. And so if we look at the S&P 500, just as a, uh, the S&P 500, of course, is a, um, it's an ETF of 500 uh, companies. So it's not exactly a image of, of the entire market, but what you'll see in this area here, certainly during the drop in March, this volume was higher volume than we had seen in the market um, with the exception of like one day, you know, here and there. It was the highest sustained market volume that we had had uh, really since 2012 when we had this drop down here. And then, of course, you go back to 2008, 2009. The thing to remember, though, is that the volume at this time was at a quarter of the price. So if you looked at the amount of money that's changing hands, you know, a thousand shares in 2009 is a lot less money than a thousand shares in 2020. So the actual amount of money that was changing hands was higher than um, we had ever seen in the market. And so essentially what you had was um, a whole lot more opportunity in the market, a whole lot more volume. And in the past, one of the biggest stumbling blocks to my strategy that I've always been very transparent about is the fact that uh, there's a limit to scalability. You may be able to buy 2,000 shares, you may be able to buy 8,000 shares, but to try to buy 18,000 or 28,000 or 38,000 or 50,000 shares, in really fast moving markets, they're often in previous years was simply not enough liquidity to be able to get in and out with that type of share size. And that changed in 2020. In 2020, with this huge surge in volume, both with a, a huge increase in active uh, retail traders on probably Robinhood and Webull and TD Ameritrade, every broker out there was seeing year over year increases in the number of new accounts and the amount of active trading by not just like five or 10 percent, but by like 100 percent, 150 percent, 200 percent, huge increases. And so all of that volume in the market, uh, you know, essentially what we've had have been um, traders sort of chasing the market around. And Tesla is a great example of that as it uh, came just under six hundred dollars today, up six hundred percent on the year. 600% on the year. Now, you know, if I put a whole million dollars into Tesla at the beginning of the year, I actually uh, would have made more money than, than I ended up making. But I will tell you that at the beginning of the year, my average share size was simply five to 10,000 shares, 15,000, 18,000 shares was occasional. But as we saw increased volume, I started feeling comfortable taking bigger and bigger size. My largest position this uh, year is about 92,000 shares. That was my single biggest position. My single biggest winning trade, uh, $94,000 in one trade. My biggest loser this year was 31,000. And not that that's not a lot of money, but when we're talking about $4 million, I made $4.3 million and my biggest loss through that whole thing was only 31,000. I mean, that's impressive. And so if we look at the metrics a little deeper, you'll see that this year I've taken 5,938 trades in total with accuracy at about 72% success. 
And certainly I've had weeks where I've made four or $500,000 and I've had weeks where I've just been break even. We've seen, even within this hot market, we've seen fluctuation, but these are the metrics of a profitable trader. And what I didn't realize coming into 2020 in January, I, I had no idea that we were gonna see the level of volume in the market that would allow me to scale my strategy from 5,000 shares up to 50,000 share positions. That's what I didn't expect. And I had no way of knowing it. And I had no way of knowing, of course, that a stock like Tesla, which is a higher price stock, would go up 600%. These have been um, completely unexpected moves, but have created a lot of opportunity. So the opportunity has been both on uh, the large cap side on stocks like Tesla, uh, but also certainly on uh, the small cap side. And I have a couple of um, examples that I can show you. So let's see, um, I'm gonna, um, let's see, let me just pull up a couple. Um, so I, I hosted a workshop um, not that long ago. So UONE, let's look at that one. So uh, this is, and CARVE, and that's another one. So this is kind of interesting. Um, so this is um, maybe a little hard to see here, but uh, you owe CARVE, sorry, CARVE. I made $181,000 on this stock. $181,000 in one day on this stock. It went from $6 to 22 bucks. So, you know, while Tesla has gone up 600% over the course of the year, this stock was up like three, 400% in one day. In one day, that's an opportunity. That type of volatility presents an opportunity. And whether you trade it with 5,000 shares or you trade it with 20,000 or 50,000 shares, the opportunity was here. And I was at a level in my risk tolerance where I was able to do uh, really well on it. This is another one um, on UONE, $153,000 in one day. Both CARVE and UONE um, were going up at the same time on interesting catalysts of uh, companies that were either either had black CEOs, black management, or uh, black founders. This was uh, a little bit of a, a kind of the Black Lives Matter coming into the market where people were saying, let's, let's vote with our money. Let's invest in black-led, black-run uh, companies. Not necessarily black-owned because, of course, they're, they're publicly traded at this point, but, uh, but ma majority owners per perhaps um, also black. So anyways, Carve and UONE both were going up at around the same time and created an incredible opportunity. Although you can see here that Carve is one of the ones that didn't hold up very well. We had two opportunities, one day where it went from eight to 22 and another day where it opened at 16 and came all the way back down to six. So that one didn't hold up as well, um, but some of them, uh, and UONE, I don't think this one held up super well either, although it did go up to a high of $56, which, you know, look at this. So this went from $4 to over $56 a share. That's up over 1,000%. I mean, that's, that's the type of stuff that uh, two years ago or a year ago even, maybe we saw, like this, this would have been like a once a year type of event. You know, it just didn't happen at the level of frequency of multiple times a week. And so I think the biggest thing in 2020 um, number one that allowed me to make $4 million was a huge increase in volume. Number one, volume in the market. Number two, a huge increase in volatility. And I think the huge increase in volatility was the result of uh, traders in the market, me included, kind of jumping on things moving. And then with so many people jumping into the market and jumping on these stocks, all of a sudden we we're seeing stocks, you know, like Tesla going up 400, 500, 600%, just making these outrageous moves, whether they're over the course of days or over the course of um, weeks or, or they're just intraday. Now, one of the third things that allowed me to make uh, $4 million this year was a willingness to take a pretty high level of risk. Um, I wasn't, as I came into the year, you know, I wasn't thinking about taking really high levels of risk. I, you know, I was just kind of like, this is an average year. But one of the things that I've always said is important in the market is that when an opportunity presents itself, you have to step up to the plate. 
I mean, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, but my opinion is that you have to step up to the plate. You may only have a couple of really, really nice hot streaks each year, and you want to make them, you know, last. You want to make them last as long as they can. You also want them to have the biggest impact on your end of your P&L. So when the market starts to get hot, I want to put the pedal to the metal and get aggressive. And typically what I've done in that mode is aggressively buy stocks as they're moving higher and higher. So, you know, if we look at, um, you know, a, a chart like, uh, UONE, we've got these pullbacks here. This goes from 14 up to 18. That's $4 a share. Then it does a little pullback and goes up to 20. A little pullback and it goes up to 30. You know, so when we have that type of action, we're talking about dollars a share. So instead of taking tiny little positions and, you know, getting in with 2,000 shares and getting out with five cents, I start getting in with 10,000 shares. I start to double to 20, triple to 30. And instead of selling quick, I hold the whole thing, $2 a share. Next thing you know, I've got a $60,000 winner. And you do that a couple times a day, and that's how you're looking at $150,000, $200,000 days. I never would have thought I would have a day where I would make $225,000, which is currently my best day. But now I actually think that, um, I, I mean, I, I now it's happened, and... Now I know what type of market uh, we need in order for that to happen. So if number one was uh, increase in volume, number two is increase in volatility, number three, it was a willingness to take a little bit more risk. And so when you take risk as a trader, what you're often doing is, especially when you're adding into breakouts, like for this type of trade right here, where maybe we bought down here at 18 and added at 20, you're adding right into high a day. So when you add at high of day, right? This, this is where you're getting a little aggressive because you have an option. Let's say you're in this with 10,000 shares and you're up 50 cents a share, you're up $5,000. You have two options. Number one is you sell it and you take $5,000 off the table. The second option is you double to 20,000 shares, which moves your cost basis from let's say 1950 to 1975. So it moves your average cost up. But now if this goes to $20.75, you'll make 20 grand. So all of a sudden, you're, incre you're sacrificing a base hit now to hit a little bit more of a home run. And while I think that you can be profitable just focusing on base hits, when you, know, when you have a pitcher that's just throwing you soft pitches and you're not swinging hard, it seems like you're... Um, you're really doing yourself a disservice. You're, you're not capitalizing on the opportunity. So that's sort of just my mindset of you have to capitalize on the opportunity when it's there and, and you'll see it, you'll know it. It's, it's kind of a no-brainer. So uh, I would say the fourth thing that allowed me to be as successful as I was this year was the fact that I already had a working strategy. You know, I didn't come into the year with no strategy. I came into the year with a profitable strategy, a strategy that I had used to turn $583 into over a million bucks. So this is actually the profits um, of this year are a continuation of that account. So if we go back to 2017, I started my small account challenge in 2017 with $583 in my account, less than 600 bucks. That's six $100 bills. $600, just a little under $600 in my account, January 1st, 2017. I have now turned that into $5.74 million in gross profits. $5.74 million in gross profits, right? So this is the scale, of, this, is, this is the strategy that I've been trading for a long time. The total number of trades here is, uh, are 6,983. All right, now coming into the year with a strong strategy is important. If you came into the year and this was like your first year of trading and you'd never traded before, then it, um, it wouldn't, oops, sorry, it wouldn't surprise me if, um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if you were struggling. It's coming in with a strategy that allowed me basically just to hit the ground running and start scaling up my strategy as soon as we started to see that level of volume and volatility. 
So when we talk about strategy, let's just kind of in, in summary, talk about what my strategy is. So who knows sort of the, the basics of my strategy? I trade momentum, right? So what I'm, and so uh, potatoes says bull flags, flat tops. Cameron says momentum, high a day. Uh, another uh, student says um, breakouts, volume, gap and go. Right. So for those that are new to trading, my strategy is fairly simple in that I look for stocks that are moving up right now, right now, this moment, and I look to jump on that momentum. So today, QS uh, is a stock that I made about $8,000 on. And you can see here that this went from about $25 up to $40 a share. And so I had trades on it right here. Oops, uh, let me get this. Um, I had trades on it right here where I got long. This is, this is clearly a momentum stock. It's a momentum stock because it's up more than 10% on the day. It's moving quickly. It has catalysts. I mean, that's what we look for, right? So this is a momentum stock. My goal is to find low risk entry points where I can capitalize on upside potential. And so this is what we call a consolidation pattern right through here. And I bought as it broke out of this little uh, descending yellow resistance line. I bought right there and we got this um, breakout here from about $34 up to uh, 36, 37. We then got a quick flush and that actually provided a dip trade for a long back through the highs here. Then we got a micro pullback right here and another one right here. There was also a trade, um, I believe in this area here. So essentially what I'm looking for is a stock that is moving up at least 10% generally, that usually has some type of news uh, and that has high relative volume. So one of the things that is important there is the word relative. So let's look at the volume of QS yesterday. The volume was about 4 million shares. The volume today is 23 million. All right. And I'll make this full screen for you so you can see it better. So when we're looking at a stock like that, it's trading on four times higher volume than the previous day. That high relative volume, that's what we look for. That is a confirmation that a lot of other traders are interested in the stock. All right, so high relative volume. So I look for stocks up 10% with high relative volume that are moving quickly. And while you could trade this long or short, you could trade it both directions, I prefer to trade to the long side for a couple of reasons. Number one, the market is um, pretty much institutionally biased, systemic bias to the long side. That is through the case of not allowing uh, shares to borrow for shorting, ha having a short sale restriction, which means you can't short to the market uh, on a down tick. You have to wait for an uptick and um, a limited amount of time that you can borrow shares, plus an inability to borrow and short in retirement accounts. So generally speaking, the market, while it allows short selling, doesn't really encourage it or make it easy, which means, at least from my perspective, it's easier to trade to the long side. That's where we see the biggest moves. That's where we see the clear momentum. And again, it's not to say that you can't trade both sides. You could short the top and, and ride the momentum back down. But remember, if you short the top, you're, the most you're ever going to make would be if the stock went to zero. Right. So in terms of the amount of money you could make, you're not going to make 400 percent on a stock like this. Whereas if you bought it at four and it goes to 16, that's a lot more potential to the upside. Yes, you could short at 16 and, and maybe it comes back down to four, but it's not it's very, very unlikely that it would do that in one day. Uh, the market just doesn't seem to work that way. So focusing on trading these uh, to the long side that's definitely part of my strategy. And one of the things that I use each day are my scanners. So these scanners that you can see here on the left, um, these are uh, a set of scanners that I have my development team have built and they're part of our uh, chat room. So 
for all of our students that are Warrior Pro students, you guys have full access to um, uh, to these uh, to these scanners. So basically, what this does is this these scanners are searching the entire market, looking for stocks that meet my criteria for being worth watching. And so I'll put them on the watch list. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to trade all of them, but there's something about them that is worth looking at. So these are actually sorted from how much they're up. So from 582 %, 400%, 94%, 31%, 26%, 23%, you know, these are stocks that we're going to be watching. Now, once the bell has rung, this is giving us alerts in real time with audio alerts of stocks that right now in this moment are moving up. And so these actually have a timestamp on them. They have the timestamp of when they hit, what the price was, what the volume was, what the float was, the gap, the percentage on the day, the relative volume, et cetera, et cetera. So this is what, um, this is what I focus on. I focus on trying to find that momentum and jump on it as quickly as possible. And what we had this year, which I certainly had no way of um, anticipating, was a mind-boggling level of momentum and volatility, where we were seeing day after day after day stocks going up 200, 300, 400%. It was like every single day we, we've sat down, we've had stocks that have, are gapping up more than 50%. That was, that was what it was. So, um, the volume in the market was probably the biggest um, the biggest difference this year, the volume, the volatility. My strategy, that hasn't changed. This is the same strategy um, that I've been trading for, for years. The biggest difference was we had so much more volatility in the market, it allowed day traders to make more money. And I've been seeing it across the board, traders out there reporting that this is absolutely the best year they've ever had. So I, I think that uh, it's an interesting time to be learning because if you're a beginner trader and you're learning right now, you're learning in a sort of a really extreme market, not something that uh, is necessarily typical. I'm very interested to see how the market kind of tapers back down, what the market looks like in uh, January and, and February and March as we you know come around to a full year. But I think that for a couple reasons, day trading is going to continue to be really popular. It's gonna to continue to be popular, number one, because day trading has never been more accessible than it is today. From all around the world, anywhere in the world, now of course with broadband, high-speed internet, you can access the market and you can access really great tools, really great brokerage uh, trading platforms that allow you to trade the markets in real time. That, even 10 years ago, was not the case. There's the article um, by, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but he was writing about the supposed death of New York City, which uh, I don't think New York City is dead. But uh, he was saying that one of the big differences, in, in his opinion, between the 2008 recession or um, the exodus from New York after September 11th uh, you know, terrorist attack is that now we have broadband internet, which really allows people to work from kind of anywhere in the world. And now, obviously, that's with the exception that companies are okay with people working completely remotely and not actually being in the office. And there's a lot of jobs where you actually do need to be you know, in person. You can't just be totally remote. But from the perspective of interest in day trading, interest in the market, I think cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and everything that's happened there has certainly brought a lot of interest in the markets. Uh, that was in 2017 and has kind of come back up here uh, again in 2020. That combined with just the accessibility and the interest that people have. The fact that we've have household names like Tesla going up 600% in one year, a lot of people are wanting to try to get a piece of that action. But it is important to state, and this is, uh, should be the obvious, that trading is risky and that the majority of people that come into the market will in fact lose money. And it's not because they don't try hard. It's not because they you know, just are, are being totally stupid. It's, it's mostly because they don't have a strategy. So they're just kind of shooting from the hip. It's like if you go to Las Vegas and sit down at one of the tables and you see, oh, there's someone that looks like they're making money. They've got a ton of chips. 
You know, they seem to know what they're doing. I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to see if I can follow along. That's, um, that's not really, that's not a strategy. That's not going to work for most people. And that's why, of course, most people go to Vegas and they lose money. Most people come into the market and they lose money. And I'm going to put up a disclaimer here that I have. Um, this is important for you guys to understand because if you're thinking about getting in to the market, um, you have to understand that you're trying to do something that most people fail at. And therefore, you need to approach this from a little bit of a different perspective. You need to approach this from the perspective of, okay, I'm trying to do something difficult. I'm going to focus on education and I'm going to practice in a simulator before I ever put real money on the line. Because you can practice trading in a simulator. We have one that we offer for our Warrior Pro students, but you can use the simulator by TD Ameritrade if you want. And you know, whatever you want is fine, it's your choice. But it allows you by trading a simulator, trade the market with real-time market data side by side, essentially me or anyone else who's a profitable trader. And then prove you have what it takes. Prove that you can be profitable. And if you can make money for a week, for a month, then all right, maybe you have a strategy that is worth putting a little bit of real money behind. But if you can't make money in the simulator, well, you're not ready to go live. That simple step would probably reduce the, the, the failure in trading substantially, or it would at least reduce the unnecessary losses in trading. I'm sure you would still have people that trade in a simulator, lose money, and then never go live, but uh, you would at least prevent the losses. So uh, Matt asked me, do, you, do I remember the exact moment when my strategy clicked for me? So the answer is no, because it wasn't really an exact moment. It was a progression. And so just to kind of draw this out on paper here to show you sort of what it looked like learning how to trade. So as I was learning how to trade, so I'm just going to put this here like this for a second. Um, you know, for a long time, I was, you know, my account was kind of going up and then it would drop back down and then it would go up and then it would drop back down and then it would come back up and drop back down. And so I was kind of doing this um, sort of sideways action for a long period of time. And then I had a stretch where I actually built my account from um, the, the minimum balance amount up to, um, at that time, it was about uh, $50,000. And then in one trade, I lost 30 grand and was kind of right back to here. But I realized, hey, you know what? Let's look at what I did from there to there. You know, what was working? And can I go back to basics? Can I focus on the basics? Because if I can do that, then I'm good. One of my big turning points was losing about $5,000 the first week of a new month. And at that point, uh, again, I had to refocus. I had to say, okay, you know what? That was um, before I had the $30,000 loss. Uh, at that point, losing $4,000 was catastrophic. It blew up my account. And I was like, all right, I've got to basically go back and, and, and try to figure out what I'm doing that works. And I found that what was working best for me was focusing on very clear and very obvious patterns on stocks that had high relative volume that were up at least 10% and that had a news catalyst. When I focused on those types of stocks, that's when I did my best. And when I did my worst was when I was kind of shooting from the hip and I was revenge trading and trading emotionally and trading Apple and, you know, stocks that weren't really moving all that much, even though, you know, for at the time, I don't know, 400 or $300 stock or whatever it was, I mean, it would, it would move, but percentage wise, the moves were so small. So I just couldn't really make money on them. You know, you'll notice probably every day. Uh, so, you know, for t today, for instance, there were a couple of stocks that a lot of traders were focusing on. ECB, I traded this one. This went from $8 to 10 bucks. There was news on it. So this is a stock that probably all of the active day traders out there would have been wanting to focus on because it had volume, volatility, rate of change, catalyst. Therefore, the price action will be more predictable. You know, if you pull up just a random stock like satellite radio, you know, and you start to try to say, oh, well, where would have been a good entry? This is so unpredictable. This is, you know, one big hedge fund, press the sell button here, and then some algorithmic trading, high frequency trading algorithms, you know, bought the dip and it kind of came up here. This is not price action that is predictable. 
or that you should be trading. You need to be focusing on the stocks each day that have high relative volume, that are uh, moving quickly, and that traders are focusing on. And so, you know, Tesla is a stock that has sustained pretty high levels of volume over the course of uh, months at this point, but intraday, it can still be a little bit difficult to day trade. It's a little bit better for kind of holding as, as a swing trade, as is also the case with some of the other uh, electric vehicle stocks. But when it comes to day trading, looking at uh, which stock each day is moving up the most, which one's the, the leading gapper, you know, which one's up the most, which one's moving the fastest, which one is the obvious one. And if you focus on the obvious stock, that's when you're usually going to do the best. So again, to kind of go back to that question of, you know, um, what were the reasons that I was able to make as much as I made this year? Uh, volatility, in the, volume in the market, volatility in the market, a willingness to take risk, uh, already coming into the year with a pretty solid strategy. You know, if I hadn't come into the year with any strategy, then when the market started to heat up, I wouldn't have had the confidence to be able to scale up. And then some of the other things that allowed me to do really well this year, uh, one of them certainly uh, my trading platform that I use. So the software that I use uh, is called Lightspeed. Uh, you can use Robinhood. I mean, you can use uh, different trading platforms as you'd like. Um, however, let me just... Um, get logged in here. Uh, while you can use a lot of different trading platforms, uh, this is a platform here that is very, very quick. Uh, so, you know, with this software, you can be jumping in and out of stocks like that. It's so fast. You can get in, get out, get in, get out. And that allows you to quickly capitalize on opportunities that present themselves in the market. Uh, when you have a stock like uh, QS that I'm up 8,600 on here, this, if we look at on, on the one minute chart, you know, we look at some of these candles and this right here, this opportunity uh, on the, these two candles, this went from $37.45 up to $40 in two minutes. If we go back to uh, this breakout right through here, you know, this is a one minute candle that was the apex point. Most of these patterns have a clear apex point. So having the right, uh, having the right, trading software is important. It would be like trying to compete in the Tour de France with, you know, like a unicycle or something. That's kind of like what Robinhood is. Um, can you get around town on a unicycle? Yeah, uh, you can um, if you want to. Can some people do it really well? I suppose so. Will it work for most people? Probably not super well. And in order to give you free commissions, they sacrifice things. You know, you can't really call a unicycle a bicycle. It's only got one wheel. In my opinion, you can't really call Robinhood active day trading software because in order to give you those free commissions, they kind of stripped out some of the things that I would say are absolute requirements for really good trading software. And something that I'm very transparent about when I tell you guys that there are uh, really good brokers out there that cater to day traders. And then there's brokers out there that just cater to kind of, you know, passive traders who will just buy 10 shares of Netflix or Tesla and then they don't look at it again for, you know, six months or eight months. So using the right trading software is important. Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, uh, Charles Schwab, TradeStation, those are all reasonably decent brokers that traders can trade with successfully. Again, there is sometimes a question just like you know, if you're in a triathlon, does it make sense to buy a $25,000 bicycle or can you do well enough with a subpar bike? You know, at a certain point, it's the person that's on the bike more than anything at a certain point. You know, when you're talking about like the the minuscule differences between light speed and, and maybe another direct access broker, you're talking about it probably doesn't make a huge difference. But when you talk about some of the initial leaps, when you go from Webull or Robinhood up to a direct access broker, that's where, you know, you're taking kind of the big leap. <clears throat> so, and then I would say um, one of the other um, 
one of the other things um, that allowed me to be as successful as I was this year was the development of our own scanners. So developing our own scanners to search the market. I used to be dependent on third party, you know, platforms and stuff like that. But I wanted to be able to customize these scanners to look for exactly what I'm looking for every single day. And now we've done that. And so I created this tool, you know, as much for myself as as for you. I, I could just use it for myself and not share it with everyone. But, uh, you know, part of this journey with me is sharing the things that work for me, both in strategy and tools. And so uh, I've made these accessible to you. But this kind of, uh, it does the heavy lifting for me because it allows me to find those strong stocks each morning uh, without having, you know, I don't have to do homework at, at night. I don't have to spend hours and hours poring over data and looking through news feeds. This just, it sifts through basically the entire stock market down to the small handful of stocks each day that are actually worth watching. And it's very predictable. It doesn't mean that you'll be green on all of them, but it's predictable that those are the right stocks to watch. So we talked about volume in the market. We talked about volatility. We talked about a willingness to manage, uh, a willingness to take more risk. We talked about the importance of strategy. We talked about the brokers and we've talked about scanners. Those are probably, uh, you know, certainly six of the reasons that I was able to be uh, as successful this year as I was. The name of these scanners, these are called the Warrior Scans. So uh, they're right here as part of our uh, chat room. This is our chat room software. So our scans are, are right here. And we'll have some more that we'll be adding into this uh, suite here down the road. But these are the ones that we uh, came out with uh, initially. I um, Let's see. I want to play something for you real quick. Um, I have to run in uh, a few minutes, but... I thought maybe I would show you this um, video. Let's see. One of the things that we did in 2019, so just about a year ago, uh, me and a bunch of our students, members of the 100K Club and um, other traders that are a part of the Warrior Pro community, we got together in Miami. And when we were in Miami, uh, it was uh, it was kind of fun. We uh, we traded together. We had a, a really awesome um, few days. And I asked a couple of our students whether or not they would take, you know, two minutes to, um, you know, make a cool um, video for me. So I, I have one here that I'm going to play. Let's see. Um, I'm just going to play this right here. I think this, this should come through okay. Let's see, hang on. My name is Galan Herndon. Um, I'm from Denver, Colorado. Hands down, the best economy that's out there online. There you go. Rocks, the most oh, let me, uh, hang on, let me start this over. The, um, there you go. My name is Galan Herndon. Um, I'm from Denver, Colorado. Hands down, the best academy that's out there online. Ross, the mentor, he's just a regular guy. He's ready to rock and roll every single day it's not so formal you know it's it's just down to earth let's earn a nice income you know and it, it's just really cool man it's overall a great experience so that was uh, everyone you saw in that room that was that was our inner circle event that was we were all trading in the same room i think there were um, about a hundred of us and um, it's it's really fun to be in a group of that many people um, where you know we're all trading the markets together and we're watching the same things and, and you realize that there's a large group of people out there that all have the same goal as you. I mean, that's exactly what it is. It's you're not alone in trying to learn how to day trade. And you know that um, just by being in, uh, obviously in our, uh, our regular chat room as well, you know, when we've got thousands of people in there that there's a lot of folks that are out there trying to make this happen. So for those of you guys who are, um, you know, kind of out there and you've been thinking about learning how to trade, I hope that you 
keep watching these videos. I hope you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. I hope you check out the links that are in the description. Um, if you jump over and join us right now while, during the sales that we've got going on, that would be awesome. We'd love to have you. I'll play another. Um, here. Ross is able to take a $586 account and turn it into 100,000. So when I see something like that and I say, if they were able to do it, I could do it too. My husband and I love Ross. We love how he teaches. And we just think the whole inner circle is one of the best training courses I've seen. Getting a little more one-on-one -on -one time with Mike and Roberto, to be able to show him my chart, where I traded, and he was able to pinpoint things that he could see that I really needed to work on. I mean, that was huge for me. And one of the last things I do, uh, the seventh reason that I've been able to be as successful as I have this year is every day I go out into my pond and I get one cup full of pond water. And now you wouldn't expect, you wouldn't expect that this would have such a profound impact, but this is a game changer right here. One cup of pond water a day, greens. It's, it's food right here for your brain. That's what has, I think, gotten me super focused but seriously this year I have been pretty focused on uh, trying to be trying to be healthy and um, both with eating healthy you know drinking drinking tea instead of coffee and uh, staying really hydrate hydrated I you know just I, you know I, I try to be pretty healthy and I think that that is important because uh, one of the things that we talk about with being able to be a successful trader is being able to have a clear head. Having a clear head to make good decisions is really important. Uh, in the heat of the moment, you know, this is, it's like, it's like instant reflexes. You need to be quick. And being able to be quick and sharp, I think for me, taking care of my body, uh, taking care of my mind, it, it's an important thing to do because if I don't keep up with that and I kind of you know, were to let that go, I really think it would have a, a detrimental impact on my trading. So, you know, that's kind of a, it's, it's, it's separate from, you know, maybe the typical things you would think of, of what it takes to be a good trader. But part of being a good trader is keeping emotions in check, knowing when to ease off the throttle, knowing when to ease off the throttle, ease on and off, you know, being able to be very present in the moment. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're coming in on two hours of sleep and, you know, you're just, you're not in, you're not in the zone, you are so much more likely to make mistakes. I'm telling you, I have trade, I've gotten off an airplane, like an, a red eye flight uh, with, you know, two hours of sleep, sat down and then promptly lost, you know, $8,000. I mean, I, I only had to do that once to realize, wow getting a good night's sleep before I sit down to trade is important. So, you know, if you think about, I, I kind of compare this sometimes to professional sports, like uh, you can think of any sport you want, but uh, I think of it like professional sports for a couple reasons. Number one, there's a feeling for me that I'm only as good as my last, my last game, uh, which is my last trading day. I think that a lot of athletes feel that pressure to continue to perform in order to continue to perform at, a very high level at your peak. You need to take really good care of yourself. You need to be constantly, uh, you know, in terms of sports, you need to be doing the things that you need to do to stay there. Now that might be working out. It might be eating healthy for trading. I think, you know, yeah, working out and eating healthy is, is good, but also, you know, maintaining your kind of emotional range, maintaining your risk tolerances, not having an event that really breaks your confidence. You know, all of that stuff is really important to be able to maintain your peak. I find day trading for me on the one hand to be a really, on the one hand when the market's hot, it's it feels very easy, um, but it, it, is, it is difficult and it can be stressful just from the perspective that you always feel that pressure to continue to perform but you want to continue to perform because the reward is fantastic. The reward is, well, $5.7 million. 
If I can continue to perform really well at this level for the next couple years, we're talking about turning $583 into $10 million, right? So the incentive to, you know, really try to learn this strategy, to take care of yourself, to do it the right way, to study, to focus on education, to trade in the simulator. You know, if you have an event at the very beginning of your career that's totally demoralizing, like you jump in with real money and lose everything, you know, that, that could get you started in such a wrong way that it could potentially jeopardize your ability to continue trading just because from a, a mindset, you're, you're just, you're gonna be so angry, you're gonna be emotional and everything else. Um, and, you know, it's just one of those things that I, I wish that I could go back and at the beginning of my career, trade in a simulator and not trade with real money because I trade with real money and I, I lost real money. You know, I went into the red and I felt incredibly frustrated. The, the money that I had, uh, it was a little bit of money that I got when my dad died. And so it had this, you know, incredible sentimental attachment. <laughs> you know, I, he didn't have a lot of things, really. I don't have a lot of his things. Um, you know, he didn't give me like a, you know, he didn't give me like a, a watch or a something, you know, some physical thing. Um, you know, but he had a little bit of money that was his mom's um, when she had died. And so it got split between me and my sister. And I used that to begin my trading career. And then I lost all of it, except for maybe about 5,000. And from that, I rose from the ashes. Um, and, you know, that's, that's where sometimes old Rambo, you know, comes in. Because Rambo, he rises from the ashes. And um, when Rambo steps out, some crazy things happen. And my, oh, Rambo is my alter ego, for those that don't already know, um, when I start to get aggressive. But it wasn't really just being aggressive that allowed me to uh, dig my way out of the hole. It was being disciplined about building a strategy, only trading that strategy, following the rules of that strategy, and then scaling it up. So what's your job right now? Your job right now is to learn a strategy. That's what you gotta do, you gotta learn a strategy. You gotta start trading a strategy, you gotta learn a strategy and start trading it in a simulator right now. You trade my strategy, trade it if you want. You trade someone else's, do what you'd like. But you've gotta trade in a simulator. You've gotta practice that strategy, prove that you have what it takes to be profitable. And then if you do, flip the switch and start trading with real money. Don't put real money on the line until you've proven profitability in a simulator. So if you wanna you know, kind of follow along with what I'm doing over the next couple weeks, I'd certainly love to have you. You'll see me on uh, YouTube live streaming. Make sure you share this video with some of your friends, hit the thumbs up and are subscribed to the channel. If you decide to join the community, you'll be able to see me with um, in a real-time feed with no latency, no lag. There's a little bit of lag here on um, YouTube. Not, I, It's just because of the servers that YouTube uses. So, um, yeah, but your job right now is to start hashing out that strategy. Figure out what your system is going to be. And, you know, the fact is, um, for all the traders out there, we all trade very similar strategies. They're not, they're really not radically different. I mean, listen, if we're all trading the same stocks each day, we've obviously got fairly similar strategies. You know, some people have a short bias, others have a long bias. Some people, um, you know, focus more on buying off support. Some people do more breakouts, but those are subtle differences in very similar strategies. If you can, if you can learn one, you can learn another. And so then I think the question comes down to, um, are you learning from a good teacher who knows what they're doing, who's qualified to teach you, who has actually proven profitability with broker statements, and you know that you're getting that from me. So anyways, um, I'll leave it at that. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in today. I hope you have an awesome rest of the day. I cannot wait for Monday. I hope that we have uh, just fireworks on Monday, but you know, if it's a slow Monday, I don't care. It's that's okay too. I'll I'll keep grinding it out on uh, smaller numbers, and you know, 
hey, $5,000 a day is a million dollars a year. So just got to keep, keep my head above water. Sometimes that's what trading is. It's just keeping your head above water, uh, survive till you thrive, fake it till you make it, and um, you know, tread water until the next hot streak. We will have another hot streak. There's no question about it. Uh, it's just a matter of when. My hope for you guys is that you'll be at a point where you're actually able to capitalize on it when that next hot streak starts. All right, so start trading a simulator, start practicing, and um, hopefully you'll be uh, in the classes in the chat room first thing on Monday morning. Those of you guys watching this years from now, months from now, whatever the case is, links in the description um, will lead you over to uh, one of my last workshops, which uh, you'll probably uh, see a couple of these. These are the workshops uh, usually that I host where I'll uh, you know, I kind of break it all down in a little bit more detail than I was able to during this workshop here. Uh, so I suppose if any of you do want to go ahead and uh, register to the workshop today, you're, you're welcome to do that as well. The one that we have um, is, I believe, the one that I just taught. Uh, was it last week? Now I can't remember if it was last. No, I think it was last week. It was last, last week that I taught that workshop. Yeah, it was. So anyways, um, you're welcome to check that out if you want. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to put up my disclaimer one more time, and I will see you all first thing on Monday morning. Get in that simulator, you guys. All right, you got the weekend to study up. Let's get after it on Monday.